Hello and welcome to today's view on Africa when I'll be focusing on whether there's any prospects for Africa to lead on migration. This obviously comes hot on the heels of the uh, release last week on the 5th of February of the uh, zero draft of the Global Compact on Migration um, and also follows on the African Union summit decisions in respect of allowing or at least adopting the protocol that would effectively allow for free, free movement of people on the African continent as well as the release of the African Union's common position on the Global Compact itself. I'm going to speak first quite generally around the Global Compact and some of the key issues uh, to look out for in, in, in that compact, and then looking quite specifically at the African position. The, the main uh, crux of my, my conversation today is around, uh, firstly, this move towards freedom of movement, and what are the real prospects of that on the African continent? So to kick off is the global compact and really questioning whether or not uh, it is that much of a global conversation. We saw last week uh, with the uh, release of the zero draft um, related to the global compact for migration, uh, we saw quite an interesting response coming out of the African continent with a number of supporters uh, for the global compact, but also looking towards what needs to happen. So beyond a prescriptive global compact, really the conversations, many of which will begin in earnest next week at the UN, around negotiating the terms of this global compact and what it will what, what will be contained in it the global com uh, compact itself essentially is geared around um, 22 main commitments that countries consider to be actionable commitments I will not go through all of those commitments but suffice to highlight a few of those that are commitments that the uh, countries hopefully by the end of the year would have made in in the final global compact it speaks to the need to have accurate and aggregated data, disaggregated data on migration, which allows for more evidence-based policies. A lot of the information at the moment speaks to estimations or guesses as to first, how many people are in countries, which is easily collected through censuses and data collected uh, in country, but also how many people are coming into those countries as well. Now, by having more accurate data and by having more disaggregated data as well, this will allow for policy making to be better informed and to speak to the actual numbers of people in those countries. The Global Compact also looks at issues around minimizing the adverse drivers of migration, as well as some of the structural factors that compel people to leave their countries in search of a better life. It also speaks to issues around the need for timely information on all states, uh, on all stages of migration, so from point of departure throughout the transit right until the end of a person's destination, as well as the need to provide the right level of support uh, to migrants. Naturally, where migrants are traveling through quite risky terrain, this would also include humanitarian assistance that needs to be offered, as well as the range of legal services around ensuring that migrants are correctly identified and possess uh, legal documents that allow for them to cross into the next country. Importantly also, it looks at ensuring that there are more available as well as flexible pathways for regular migration as well as ensuring that those people who are moving in order for them to secure employment also are fairly as well as ethically recruited. It speaks to some of the challenges we've seen recently where people are forced into slavery or for very minimum wage forced to work because either they're not properly documented or there are barriers of entry. So proceeding then on to the need to ensure that people's lives are also saved and also to establish uh, coordinated international efforts to rescue migrants as well as to uh, seek those migrants that are missing. It also looks to responding to some of the criminal elements that do creep in, including the smuggling of migrants as well as the trafficking of migrants, speaking to the need to have a transnational and international response both to smuggling as well as to trafficking with a view to preventing and effectively combating them. 
and also quite importantly, perhaps uh, one of the main points, but which comes as the 11th of the points under the commitments under the Global Compact, speaks to the management of borders and allowing for integrated, secure, as well as coordinated approaches to border management. These are just some of the 22 key elements or commitments within the Global Compact. The question then and the question that we are looking at today is where does Africa fit in all this? Following the AU summit or during the AU summit, the African Union uh, resolved on their common position uh, regarding the Global Compact. The African Union's common position looks primarily at the six thematic areas. And they do this under the, um, the main um, area of opportunities for migration, as well as free movement of persons in Africa, but also looking to mitigate challenges. The focus of the African Union's common position is the six thematic areas. The first relates to addressing the drivers that push people out of countries, um, but also some of the key um, threats to people's uh, safety and security. It looks at why is it that in particular regions you have mass flows of forced migration, while at the same time also having mass flows of voluntary migration. The second of the key thematic areas under the African Union's common position on migration speaks to the need for a human rights based uh, approach to migration that also centers around non-discrimination and a fight against xenophobia. The third speaks to responding to the criminal threats that migrants face. And this includes the smuggling as well as trafficking and the slavery, which we saw particularly uh, last year with the revelations around the modern day slavery that is ongoing in Libya. The fourth element in the African common position relates to international cooperation and coordination between the various countries and regional economic communities. The fifth speaks to addressing irregular migration and working more towards ensuring that there are clearer and more regular pathways for migrants to move. The idea being that if people have uh, more open and legal channels of movement, then they will not opt for the illegal means of movement, which, make, which render them sometimes susceptible to abuse and the vulnerabilities that come with that. The sixth and last of the African Union's common positions thematic areas relates to the contributions of migrants as well as communities in the diaspora, not only to their countries back home, but also to the communities in which they live. One of the key elements here um, would be the, the, the call by African leaders for there to be an African institute for remittances, which would look at a way in which to better harness the, the remittances that are received from the diaspora and migrants currently working outside of their home countries. The, the next relates to the African Union's migration policy framework for Africa. This migration policy framework for Africa is currently being reviewed, but it also covers a number of key points which I'll speak to, and then also the recent decision to allow for free movement of persons. On the seven priorities that are contained within the African Union's Migration Policy Framework for Africa, they highlight the need to uphold humanitarian principles, the need to have safe and secure border management, the need for regular migration as well as the promotion of labor migration and circular migration, the need to ensure that migrants are integrated in the communities where they find themselves, and the need to uh, recognize the role that migrating communities play in development, and then also uh, to have capacity building that allows for people to actually be able to deal with everything from border management to protection of migrants and the regulation of movement. The last then is to ensure that all of this is informed by policy relevant research as well as capacity. I'll now turn to whether or not free movement of people on the African continent can be a reality. 
in order for me to do this, I chose to start first at looking at what the regional economic communities have done with a view towards freedom of movement. By looking at this, we look at, uh, I'll focus on ECOWAS, which is the economic community of West African states, the Southern African Development Community, the East African Community, as well as the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, which are bodies that, ex that have existing freedom of movement uh, of persons uh, in various forms, and which would essentially be the building blocks towards the African Economic Community's ultimate freedom of movement that was um, included in the protocol that was adopted by the AU heads of state in the summit um, last month. So looking first at the existing free movement regimes, I'll start with the Economic Community of West African States. ECOWAS has 15 member countries, all of whom are party to the free movement process. This has allowed for relative free freedom of movement within the ECOWAS region, while recognizing also some of the challenges that, that come with it, um, there are a, a number of um, uh, states within the ECOWAS region who are also looking to ensuring that beyond uh, stated needs for freedom of movement, that freedom of movement is not restricted or only to, to people going for, for either tourism or cross-border trade. So, in effect, a number of people within the region uh, continue to move fairly freely in ECOWAS, and in many ways it sets the example on ways in which we can begin to look at effective freedom of movement on the continent. In the Southern African region, countries are covered by a variety of, uh, of regimes that allow for freedom of movement. The Southern African Customs Union that includes South Africa, Lesotho, Swaziland, Botswana and Namibia allow for freedom of movement between those countries and essentially a more coordinated approach that allows for quicker border management uh, for member states, for those member states and people coming from those member states. Those, some of those states are also part of the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa which in effect uh, stretches from South Southern Africa all the way to Libya in North Africa. Uh, these include countries like Zimbabwe, Malawi, Zambia, uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo uh, as well. Um, likewise, in East Africa, the East African community, through a number of bilateral and multilateral agreements, has allowed for degrees of freedom of movement. So when you look at the map of the countries that currently are under some form of a free movement regime, you actually see that ab about 42 African countries are members to at least a freedom of movement regime or have an agreement with countries, bordering countries, that allow for freedom of movement. With the proposed tripartite alliance, which includes the Southern African Development Community, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, as well as the East African Community, should phase two of that tripartite agreement kick in, um, it would e effectively mean 26 African countries are now part of a single freedom of movement regime, which covers SADC, the EAC, as well as COMESA. So the map of countries that are in fact, uh, or that would in fact over the next year or two be part of a freedom of movement regime is the majority of African countries. The question then is how those countries now in the process of negotiating and, and ratifying the new freedom of uh, movement uh, protocol do that in a way that actually makes it more coordinated and more coherent. In fact, uh, one, of the, one of the key issues that has emerged, at least from ECOWAS as well as the Southern African region, is that a number of countries are interested in being part of a free movement uh, regime that allows for circular migration. Uh, the next phase of the protocol speaks to the right of residence and settlement. So for now, we're simply talking about people being allowed access into a country and to return home. The next phase will look at people being allowed to settle in the countries of their choice. That's where Africa is at the moment. And in fact, looking at the fact that 42 out of the 55 member states of the African Union 
are in some form of a free movement uh, of persons regime, this does make it seem a lot more likelier than if we were looking at single ratifications that are not on the basis of the regional economic communities agreeing. So perhaps the prospect of an African economic community that includes all member states of the African Union is no longer, at least for now, the pipe dream that it was several years ago.